All right, everybody, welcome back. Today we're here with Michael Wilson from Pony Wolf, and we are going to go through a code demo of a match three space RPG game that's going to be released or is released, depending on when you're looking at this video, uh, to the community. Yeah, absolutely. I think this is a, one of a series of uh, kind of modular games we want to try to release uh, for free to the community uh, to give people really a framework to kind of jump off of uh, to build their own games. And uh, we're trying to do some popular genres um, and mechanics. And so that way people can kind of snap them together as they see fit to uh, yeah, build their own great content. Yeah, I know that most of the time when somebody builds a game, you know, especially they, you know, they first learn Corona, they're, they're like, okay, I, they build the game sort of top down. Right, and then everything's all the code is kind of in line, all the logic is sort of in line. But what you're proposing is that they can break that out into these separate modules, like you said, and then be able to snap things together, uh, so that they can actually take a, a something like a health meter or or a scorekeeper or something like that, and then take that whole piece of code and just apply it to another project and not have to rewrite it over and over and over again. Yeah, we're really looking at kind of three levels of, I don't know what developers would call portability, right? So we'll have, you know, kind of package portability. So these are kind of utility libraries that could work across multiple games. Uh, we have scene portability or these scenes uh, like a menu scene or a credit scene or a game over scene uh, that again, you can take these scenes and kind of snap those together. Um, rather than writing the same credit scene over and over and over again, you have one credit scene that's portable throughout your projects. Um, and then we have kind of game modules, and these are little bits of um, uh, little Lua modules that allow you to do kind of common things you would do from a mechanics standpoint. So in this case, we'll be showing off like a match three module. Uh, so in one line of code, you can spin up a whole match three game um, that just comes across as a display group that you can then move around, scale, resize, do whatever you want to. Um, and in this particular demo, we'll take um, another classic kind of RPG hallway um, where you can walk down a hallway and interact with uh, uh, characters and tie that together with the match three logic and have the match three logic actually do things within our regular scene. Uh, both of these are separate modules and you can see they're stitched together pretty easily. Okay, great. Well, so let's take a look at the game. I mean, you, you, you get it there on the, the right hand side. Let's, let's just say, take a look, walk through the game and show people what they're going to build when they uh, walk through this project. Great. Yeah. I mean, one of the, the nice things about this project is, is we're actually created uh, a brand new set of uh, open source graphics to go along with the game. So these graphics are freely available for anybody who downloads the project um, to kind of edit and uh, do other things with. And, and plus, we've included a lot of graphics that we're not even using in this demo. Um, so here we're looking at the main game scene, which just has a tap click to begin. And uh, what we have here is a three match game. Um, in this particular game, you match, uh, let's say three attack icons, and that will hit our uh, little alien there. Um, let's see if I can find another match. Um, bring more tiles on the screen, and as soon as we, uh, let's see if we hit this guy, um, and kill that that uh, alien and now we can match three keys and that actually opens up the gate and takes us to the next level. Uh, some of these levels will have um, aliens inside of them, other ones will have items. Uh, we'll try to show that module here uh, real quick. And the uh, downside of the game is, is if uh, you accidentally make a match of three aliens, then the alien hits you um, and your game is over. All right, well, the first thing I want to talk about is project organization inside of Corona SDK. Um, and one of the things that makes Corona, I think, uh, an unbelievable uh, development platform is the ability uh, to having this kind of ultimate flexibility, right? So, I mean, if you want to write a program all in one uh, code file, um, you can do that. If you want to break it out into multiple code files, you can do that. If you want to make things more object-oriented, you can do that. Um, if you want to uh, make things more method oriented, you can do that. Um, and that's great uh, for prototyping or kind of starting a quick pro uh, project. But if you need to uh, work with other developers or import other people's modules into your uh, projects, um, it really helps to start from kind of an organized project. Um, and for us at Pony Wolf, at least, uh, the two things that we look for is this idea of scene and package portability. 
Uh, and all this means is, is that we want to create scenes uh, in our game. These are kind of menu scenes, option scenes, credit scenes we talked about earlier. And we want to create those once and give them the ability to be easily ported over into other projects. Obviously, we change the graphics and change the content inside of it. But for the most part, the functionality of that Steam state stays the same. And then we have package portability. This goes to uh, kind of overall modules um, that we want to bring in. So these might be things that work across uh, every game. So let's say uh, like the spine run times, um, or we'll look at uh, our Pony FX module that's in this uh, project. Or it's individual packages that live within a scene. So, um, you know, health bars, uh, heart bars, um, uh, the three match module we'll look at. So making sure that these kind of pieces are, are portable is the goal. And it really starts with a good, um, you know, file structure. And without going into too much detail here, we can see that, um, you know, we have a project folder um, and immediately off that project folder, we break into two different things. So we have this com folder or package folder um, as it's called, um, which would have things that are, um, almost extensions to the language. These are packages that would be used across multiple uh, projects. Um, and then we have a scene folder, which is really the structure of our actual game. Um, uh, inside the scene folder, you're going to have a separate subdirectory for each one of the scenes that you have, and then a separate Lua file um, that basically loads and executes against the content in that scene. Um, and then under those individual scene folders, we would keep things like images, sound effects, and any other uh, modules or packages uh, in a library folder here. Um, then just kind of the directory structure that uh, Corona has, you have things that you have to have in the, in the project folder uh, off the, the root of the project folder, like your main Lua, your config Lua, your build settings. Um, and then obviously icons and images, launch images, um, and then you may have some global um, content too. You have a, a title song that you want to uh, have off the root directory or um, a logo image that you might call from various other places. Those would be things that could uh, come off that uh, structure. Uh, when you're looking at it inside more of a uh, file manager view, um, you can see we have our kind of project directory here. Um, we have our scenes directory here. Um, and then we have all that content in here. And it may sound a little counterintuitive to have our content sitting so far off of the uh, main root folder, uh, but it makes a lot of sense when you think about grabbing that entire game folder, grabbing that entire credits folder or menu folder, and porting it right over into a new project, and then just kicking off with a go-to scene um, that gets that project set up. And that's kind of uh, the directory structure that we've um, um, been using for quite a while now. And it's, you know, changed a little bit and refined a little bit, but for the most part, um, you know, it ports over really, really well into an editor. So you can see here we have our package directories, we have our scene directories, and it becomes very um, self-evident inside your file structure that, hey, I've got my main Lua file, I've got my game file, I've got my menu file, I've got my game over file. Um, and these different Lua files are gonna launch different pieces of the game. Um, and I can string those together with simple uh, go-to scenes. So our main Lua sends us off to our menu, our menu Lua um, will eventually send us off to our game and our game will eventually either send us back to the menu or send us to the game over screen. Um, and so by um, you know, separating these scenes out into these different directories and then the associated Lua files, it would make it very easy for people who wanna join in on creating assets for the asset store um, to take a, um, you know, a certain thing that you might see in a game, like a high score screen or a, a three star screen that happens at the end of the level and build all the functionality for that, um, all the way to the point to sample graphics um, in it and ship that off as one complete asset. And then uh, that allows you as the game developer to focus on your unique gameplay, your unique engine, and not spend all this time reinventing the wheel about, oh, well, how am I gonna do a game over screen? How am I gonna do a credit screen? You know, what we're hoping to do over these next uh, few projects is start building out all of these different scenes that you would need to make a complete game 
Um, and then inside of our game scene have a few uh, modules around. Um, this is our first person hallway module, our health bar, heart bar, different items, monsters, score, and then a three match game um, that all can be um, just single, single code files that can be pulled out and dropped into a new project. Excellent. Well, I'm looking forward to that. So let's uh, let's go ahead and, and uh, leave that right there. And then when we come into the next video, we'll pick that where we left off and we can look at each one of those modules. Sounds good.